Breaking news, everyone. This literally is just unfolding as we speak, but it warrants the video and it does so for a variety of reasons. But apparently at Battle Harden Wallonia, I believe it's in Belgium, correct me if I'm wrong, but at Battle Harden Wallonia, Icelander just won the event, scored 40 points, and has, if this is confirmed, officially crossed over into living legend status. And why make a video so quickly about it? Well, as you may have known, or if you didn't know, there was a change recently to how living legend points are one, accumulated, and then posted, and how they go about actually rotating those heroes. So on Monday, if all of this checks out and Icelander indeed gained 40 points for the Battle Hardened Wind, on Monday, there's going to be an announcement saying that Icelander is officially entering Living Legend status coming up this Friday, so the very following Friday, which means that she will not be allowed to be entered into play in any future tournaments starting on the next Friday, which is like December the 1st or 2nd, something like that. Let me double check. December the thing is the 1st, December the 1st. So first things first. How do I feel about Icelander rotating? I'm a little conflicted about it, partially because going into Uprising, Icelander was by far my favorite hero of the three. She was the one I was most excited about. I love Wizard. I'm a you know, like a Wizard stan, and out of the gate, it felt really cool to play a disruptive version of a Wizard. And so I really enjoyed playing her. I liked deck building with her. I liked trying, uh, you know, like freezing point OTKs and things like that. And just playing towards the Frost Hex game plans. And then just playing, you know, some, some really cool, like hybrid versions of the deck that were originally circulating around when she released in Everfest in Blitz. As the format kind of unfolded, and I don't want this to be a knock on anyone. I don't want this to... I. I I don't want this to, to sound like I dislike people for, you know, coming up with the best deck. Michael Hamilton's version of uh, Bolander really kind of changed everything with regards to not just Icelander, but really deck building in general. And that version of the deck just felt deeply unfun to play against. And it, it was fine to play with. Like, I, I felt fine playing it, and it was it was fun in a lot of respects. But it, it didn't feel as thematic. It didn't feel as wizardy. It didn't feel like I I guess I wanted it to feel, which is selfish to me. I know, I understand that. But because of that, I didn't necessarily latch onto the hero as deeply and as much as I thought I would for the long term. And the more that that Bolander version of the list, which is really just sort of playing super hyper efficiently and not necessarily as thematically as, as I would have liked, the more that kind of came to the fore and you know, won national championships with Michael Hamilton just crushing it, doing a fantastic job. And then the same thing in World, become the world championship, world champion at the world championship. And that just kind of taking over the meta for so long, I I didn't necessarily find myself going to, you know, want to play that deck, like sitting down and wanting to play it. And then of course I fall in love with Dromai and, you know, with dragons and then with aggressive versions of Dromai, which has sort of this head butt mentality with someone like Icelander. So I'm kind of conflicted because I want, you know, wizards to be a thing. And I want, technically I like Icelander from a, like an idea standpoint, but the way that the deck eventually just became like sort of the de facto best deck by version of playing Bolander just never really sat well with me. And of course, I know there's a lot of people that are really excited to see ice go and, and finally all the ice heroes are now rotated and so you don't have to play against Frostbites and I understand that. And that does kind of segue us nicely into what this this uh, you know meta is now going to represent with this change happening so quickly off of the back of this new a living legend rotation system happening every week. So let's go ahead and talk about that. But let me know what you think about Ice and about Icelander heading out in the comment below. I'm a little sad about it, a little bittersweet, simply because I know I like I like her. I think she's cool, but at the same time, I also want to play in a world where ice doesn't exist either, you know, or where really frostbites don't exist. And uh so I, I don't know, I'm I'm kind of torn on it. Let me know what you think in a comment below, but let's talk about how this is going to affect the metagame of Flesh and Blood going forward. And it's fascinating to think, looking at the Living Legend leaderboard, that technically the uh, World Championship was not won this year by Icelander. It was actually won by Fi, which put him up 300 points into the basically the second rotation slot now at 724, 
just a little bit ahead of Dash and Fenter Extraordinaire, which has just been a steady, just very steady hero. I think that's kind of funny. But nevertheless, if Icelander does rotate, now you're looking at all of these heroes that are, um, you know, sort of broken apart by ice or frostbite disruption that can now start to push their way in. And I think the biggest thing that it means is that now Phi is this real big, like, thumbs up kind of inflection point because there's no way for you to, uh, you know, there's no reason for you to include all of these blues in your sideboard to play against Icelander and Frostbites because you don't have to. Like, everyone was talking about how Belittle and Minnowism was so, like, impactful because it allowed you to play around Icelander and uh, get more resources in hand. But at the same time, like if I just won against Icelanders and, uh, you know, like Dromize and things like that in the world championship. And now Fies can basically take out the Icelander package and really run, you know, just like all the way, all gas, no breaks into this meta. And that is a very scary proposition, but the same thing can be said. And same thing uh, is true with Dromai as well. If Dromai now no longer has to run like any blues whatsoever, there's really no reason to uh, outside of maybe your you know incidental passing mirages if you still believe in passing mirages as a possible play into the uh, control decks, which I'm just going to tell you right now, I, I talked to a couple of people, including Mara and myself, and I, I could see maybe passing mirage not necessarily being as big of a deal going forward, but... You could keep that in the deck, and then you can cut all your other possible blues. You can cut, like, um, your Oasis Respites. You can cut your Themize if you want to. Like, there's all of a sudden a ton more space in Dromai now to tech into that. And then you look at, like, Viserai. Is Viserai all of a sudden feeling way better now that Viserai doesn't have to deal with Frostbites that kind of, like, really heavily tax you? Yes, Viserai still has to look down the barrel, stare down the barrel of Warmonger's Diplomacy, but at the same time... That's like there's three of those cards in the deck and yeah, it can mangle the deck, but maybe now you have enough flexibility with one of your like most terrifying matchups of Frostbites kind of finally exiting the uh, the realm here. Maybe Viscerai starts to feel better. Bravo, who kind of got preyed on if memory serves correctly by Icelander, now could also see some play and, and maybe a disruptive, more aggressive version of Bravo feels better into Fi. Uh, with on hits that they can't really stop and discards that they can't really, uh, you know, play around and pay around. And same thing with Katsu. Like, if I'm looking at this metagame just off the top of my head, looking at it right now, I'm thinking that ninjas in general are getting way better. Dromai is getting better, but has to contend with the two ninjas. And then a lot of heroes that, you know, didn't feel good into, uh, you know, Icelander, for example, now might feel better. I don't know, and and correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me in a, in the in the comments below. I don't think necessarily Azuri gets any better with Icelander rotating. I don't think that that's the case. In fact, I would think it would be the opposite. Um, Azalea still feels like a, a dog against Bravo, who can kind of stonewall you. But like, there's like a lot of a lot of possible changes. Even Dash IO might uh, you know see some improvement in general without having to worry about Icelanders kind of stonewalling them. But again, I, I think Dash IO also can feel a little bit of the hurt and the hate uh, from the probably the next big target and the next big control piece in Warmonger's Diplomacy that will probably make its way back in. But with all that said, I think we come to the big crux moment of all of this, and that is, does Kano become the de facto best deck because no one cares about Arcane Barrier? If everybody starts cutting Arcane Barrier, starts cutting Oasis, the Mize, all those start to go. Like, is Kano just like a, a super good Dark Horse? I'm sorry. So much copium. So much. I, I just, I don't think it's going to happen. But what if it did? That would be pretty cool if it did. So I don't know what you think about this new meta, but I am excited to watch it play out. And at a weekly kind of like fast pace uh, compared to like the old school, you wait through the entire season before they rotate. This is really exciting. So let me know what you think in a comment below. Yeah, like I said, breaking news. This just happened like five, ten minutes ago based on the recording of this uh, video. So let me know how you feel about Icelander rotating if you are excited for it, if you're a little sad. I'm like I said, I'm somewhere in the middle, but I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. And if you want to be the person that makes this number go up to another one of these, like a multiple of 10, you could press the like button and the subscribe button at the same time and everyone will cheer for you. I promise it's going to happen. As always, thanks for watching.